Hey everyone, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMGA single pitch instructor and today I'm going to show you what I carry in my standard trad rack so that you can make some educated decisions before you spend a lot of money on uh, on your trad rack and uh, I really recommend you you know considering uh, getting into trad climbing as you progress in sport climbing uh, it really helps you to access a lot more landscapes and routes and some of the most classic routes uh, in the in the US and of course you know across the world so I really recommend you to think about it, but I also want you to make educated decisions uh, when you buy your equipment um, the number one thing I want you to be thinking about as you start to consider buying a trad rack is less is more um, I can't tell you how many people I see um, with this whole you know dress of equipment um, and then you know a bunch of stuff across their chest and everything else getting on a moderate multi-pitch route and they've got to be carrying you know 40 pounds of stuff um, rock climbing is really hard to do when you're weighed down with equipment so um, don't be afraid to you know start light and uh, you know r be confident in your climbing skills especially as you start out in track climbing doing kind of moderate climbs to build that confidence and then going from there so I'm going to show you my rack now and I'm going to show you each component but I wanted you to see what it looked like on me and you can see as I do a 360 turn here um, you know it's not a ton of stuff it's not this huge dress of chain mail uh, that I see uh, some people working with uh, it's everything I need and nothing more and sometimes I go even less than this uh, but this is kind of my you know starting point uh, for climbing uh, any given route and then I kind of uh, pick and choose from that point. Um, before I get into the actual trad hardware I do want to show you my auxiliary rack uh, components because um, you do need to have the proper amount of carabiners and slings um, in order to build anchors, to repel, to set up uh, any kind of you know special systems and uh, if you're not equipped there you can you know get stuck at an anchor point or at a repel point. Uh, likewise, if you have too many carabiners, because you say, oh, we'll just pack a bunch of carabiners so we don't get stuck, those are the most heaviest thing on your rack, okay? The locking carabiner, the locking HMS carabiner is the heaviest thing you're going to carry. So you want to make sure you're carrying just the amount that you need, uh, maybe one extra in case you drop one, and that's it, okay? So I'll start out with um, my lightest carabiners, which is my wire carabiners, <coughs> and I have... Uh, two that are always attached to my belt and then I have two that are attached to the 120 centimeter slings that I put across my chest uh, and that's enough to build uh, two anchors or extend uh, some cams or nuts or whatever uh, with some extra extension if I want to and uh, nothing more. Uh, it's okay to have a couple extra of these if you want more than four because um, they're so light uh, but these are the uh, black diamond mini wires so I think they're 23 grams so not bad at all not a bad choice uh, the second thing that I bring is 220 centimeter slings uh, these are really good and versatile for using uh, while you're climbing my primary use for these is either anchor building or extending out gear longer than the standard uh, 60 centimeter sling that I use for my alpine draws which I'll show you in a second but I always carry two Dyneema uh, fabric uh, 120 centimeter slings. Uh, the other sling I carry, uh, other 120 centimeter sling I carry is a nylon one. This is a black diamond one. Um, and this is solely used for um, repelling. And I always extend my repel to my um, uh, repel device and then a carabiner to clip onto things uh, to make it double backed up. But uh, I always dedicate a 120 centimeter nylon sling to that. I can use that nylon sling if needed. If these are both gone and I want to build an anchor with 120 centimeter sling, I can use that. I do have that flexibility, but normally it's just dedicated um, to repelling. Uh, <clears throat> for locking carabiners, I kind of arrange it in this way. Um, I have two locking carabiners that are dedicated to my two uh, anchor building uh, system. So this is a 240 centimeter Dyneema sling that I'll use for building a quad or something like that. And then I have my carabiner all ready for me to clove hitch into. And then 
Um, I have another cordelette that will basically be the same size as this if I uh, loop it uh, that I can build another anchor with. Again, same thing, locking carabiner that can go um, right on uh, my clove hitch and I'm ready to go. Other carabiners I have, um, so I have four total HMS lockers. So I just showed you two of them. Um, I have another one that's just uh, hanging out uh, as an extra. And then um, I have another one on my ATC guide, okay? I like to use the big HMS carabiners on my ATC guide because um, that's going to offer some smoother um, belaying. And then I have, so that's four HMS lockers, and then I have three uh, small lockers. These are uh, the Black Diamond small ones. I forget what they're called, but you can see very small. Uh, this one's just loose. This one has my Prusix, or what will be used to make Prusix if I need it. And then my other uh, small locker like that was on my blue carabiner. Okay, so four HMS carabiners, three small lockers, or four HMS locking carabiners, three small locking carabiners, four mini wire carabiners, two 120 Dyneema slings, one 120 nylon sling, some Prusiks that I showed you, my third hand ATC guide that I can do all my rappel stuff with. Um, and then the only other thing on my aux rack is my Grigri, which I don't have with me. But I do prefer to belay with a Grigri uh, when I can uh, for all the obvious reasons, the uh, advantages that a Grigri offers you. So that's my auxiliary rack. And I encourage you to look at that and kind of figure out, hey, where could I feel comfortable, you know, building anchors, having some backup stuff for rappelling and all that kind of stuff, but not overburden myself by carrying 20 HMS lockers up. Okay, and you want to be thinking about your partner as well, what equipment do they have, okay? Then moving into the uh, trad rack, the first thing you're going to need in any trad rack is uh, alpine draws. And these will be clipped to cams, nuts, tricams, whatever, hexes if you have them. Um, and the advantage of these over quick draws is they can be extended. And on wandering big multi-pitch trad routes, uh, by extending a carabiner like that, you minimize the drag that you have, which accumulates over the course of a climb. So once you get over 100 feet, 130 feet, 140 feet, uh, the drag really starts to accumulate. And what this extended alpine draw is gonna do is allow the rope some flexibility to move around so it's not uh, bending at every piece that you place. Okay, so it's going more just straight up, which will minimize the drag. Uh, the components of this is one 60 centimeter sling and then two wire carabiners, okay? And then to make it, you, you have both carabiners looped through. You put one carabiner through the other, clip the strands of the carabiner that you just looped through and pull it tight, it's ready to go. And then if I wanna extend it, I take off one carabiner like that and then I grab any part of any single strand of sling and I can pull it through. Okay, so one more time. I got the two carabiners here. Put one through the other. And then the one I just went through, I'm gonna grab its strands. Okay, like that. And then pull it and then you can see it's ready to be attached to my harness. Now one thing people will do is they'll carry too much of these. Okay, I carry between six and eight um, alpine draws, uh, you don't want to get in the habit of extending every single thing. You want to start trying to use your judgment. Why am I extending this piece? Uh, because uh, it takes more time to extend and then build back the alpine draw. And it's also heavier. You know, the alpine draws can accumulate. So I have um, eight of them. The way I clip them to my belt is I have them stacked in twos. So instead of clipping them to my belt, you know, in a row, I'll clip one to the other like this and then I'll clip that to my belt. And you can see I have four here and four here, okay? The other uh, piece of trad gear that's not a, a placement piece that you'll wanna have is a, um, a uh, nut tool or sometimes called a nut wrench. And you can use this for getting out, you know, difficult gear that's stuck. 
Um, I try not to use this as much as possible, uh, but every now and then I'll get a piece of gear stuck uh, that requires some extra attention and I'll use that. I usually keep it at the back of my harness because I very rarely use it. A lot of times I'll use a carabiner to bump something loose versus the nut tool. Okay, so now to get into the fun stuff uh, on the trad rack and that's the actual uh, protection pieces. Um, the most common that's gonna be in every single trad rack, I think universally, is a set of nuts. Uh, so this is what my set of nuts looks like. Okay, uh, sometimes these are called wires, uh, but uh, I just call nuts because I, I guess that's how they're advertised. Uh, but these are the Wild Country Ultralight nuts. Um, you can see the biggest one, there's 10 of them, so it's one to 10. And this is the biggest one. I'll put my uh, pointer finger up there so you can see relative to that. So that would go in a crack like that and get caught there. Uh, the thing I like about these is they're offset. So that's a kind of a trapezoid shape, you can see, okay? And so if I have a slightly flaring uh, rock like that, um, this can be placed in this way so that it, it contacts the surface more. Uh, and the more surface area with nuts, the better it's gonna hold. So in contrast to the number 10, here's a number one, and you can see how much smaller it is. Okay, so you can place it like that, or like that. You can see there's a little bit of a trapezoid there, um, but you want more surface area, so I want this big wide surface to contact the rock, so I'll place it like that, typically. And then they incrementally go up, one to 10, okay? Um, and you get more and more used to being able to grab those uh, quickly and size them up quickly the more you practice. Uh, the second, uh, most common piece of gear that's in almost every standard piece of or every standard trad rack is the cam Okay, and I'm sure you've seen these uh, This is uh, called a number two cam uh, where you would pull the trigger to compress it Place it in a rock and release the trigger until these lobes contact the rock, okay? Um, <clears throat> the most common uh, manufacturers of, of cams that you'll see out uh, out in the field is Black Diamond number one and then Wild Country number two. Uh, there are other companies um, that uh, make them, um, Metolius, Trango, other guys, but um, Black Diamond and Wild Country are the most common. And I would recommend looking at those uh, simply from the fact of the color scheme. So you can see there's a color scheme to these, okay? and since they're the most common, the colors are a lot of times called out in the beta. Uh, you know, do you have a red cam? Do you have a green cam? And being able to know, um, to not have to do some kind of equation in my mind with the Metolius equipment on, hey, what size Metolius is equivalent to a green cam in Black Diamond is uh, definitely uh, an advantage. Additionally, if you go climbing with a partner, they're probably going to be accustomed to this system. Uh, so uh, buying any other brand besides those two, um, you know, you start to kind of uh, add an extra layer of complexity to your climbing. Now I own the Wild Country uh, cams. They're uh, super light. Uh, the Black Diamond Ultralights are equivalent weight, but I'm big on saving weight and these Wild Country cams have done great. The Wild Country cams are actually called Friends. Uh, that's their, I guess, marketing thing. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind when you're looking and says, I thought he said cams, it's called a friend. Uh, and that's what you'll see on their website or on, on uh, you know, REI or whatever. Um, <clears throat> other advantage of Wild Country is their sling is a double sling. So uh, if I want to just extend the sling without doing any work with the Alpine draw, I can clip, you can see there's, there's two loops. So if I clip one of the loops, like this and then pull, you can see I get an extra extension there. Uh, and then the advantage of that is if I want a little bit of an extension, but I don't want to have to break down my Alpine draw, I can do that. And then when I get back to my anchor station to disassemble that, it's simple. And I'm right back to where I was. Oh, this tab got caught, but right back to where I was, I can put this back on my rack and I'm ready to go rather than have to rebuild this Alpine draw. So that's one advantage of the Wild Country ones over Black Diamond, um, but th they're both good in my opinion. Now, what sizes do I have? 
Uh, these are the most expensive things, so you want to be careful to buy just the amount that you need. Um, so I have double sizes uh, from 0.4, which is the gray one, 0.4, which is the gray one, up to number two, which is the yellow one, okay? And so you can see the differences between those two, 0.4 right here, uh, much smaller, much less uh, room for expansion, and then the, the yellow one, much bigger, much more room for expansion, okay? In between 0.4 and 2, there's 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and number 1. So 0 0.5 is purple, 0 0.75 green, number 1 is red, okay? And then I have a single and a number three, which is slightly bigger than the yellow one. Actually, I'll put the yellow one up so you can see the difference. Uh, number three is about three inches, and you can see much bigger. And FYI, the bigger the cam is, the more solid the placement typically, because there's just more room for expansion if it slides around in the rock and goes to a wider part, you know, th this lobe has room to expand and contract, okay, versus the smaller ones only have so much room, okay? So a single number three. And then on the smaller side, I have a 1.1 1 .1, uh, and 1.2 um, and one, oh, I actually have two point threes here. So I correct myself so from point four it's from point three to number two, I have doubles. And then uh, you can see I have these very small number one and number two. I'll try to put my pinky up next to these. So you can see how small. And you can see, look at that give on that number one. Very small, very little room for error on a placement. So you wanna be careful when you're placing these small ones, okay? And I don't recommend for new trad climbers climbing uh, routes where there's a lot of small placements because you, you want to be placing big gear that's going to just feel more solid at first and as you learn more then you can get into placing smaller gear. The good news is is the size of the gear getting smaller and smaller kind of uh, lines up with the climbs getting more and more difficult so your trad skills in climbing should progress about the same as uh, your actual, you know, technical climbing, you know, that your body can do. Uh, so that's, that's kind of helpful. Last thing to note on cams is uh, they don't come with the carabiners attached. If you order a cam, it's going to show up to your doorstep like that. Um, and then you need to buy uh, the carabiner of your choice to go with it. So this is the Camp Nano 22, uh, and it is... Uh, 22 grams, which is very light for a wire gate carabiner, so wire gate. Um, you can get uh, the typical you know, weight of a wire gate carabiner is around 30 grams, maybe 35 grams. Uh, I like to go a little bit lighter and smaller. It helps everything to fit on my waist as well. Um, and you can actually get even lighter than 22 grams. Adelry makes the lightest at 19 grams, but that one's a little bit small for me becomes kind of difficult to handle. Uh, the Black Diamond uh, mini wire uh, uh, gate carabiners are 23 grams, so equivalent to this Camp One. Uh, but the Camp Ones are a little bit more economical and Camp's a reputable brand. Um, the last uh, piece of equipment um, that's more specialized for the Southeast is called the Tricam, and that looks like uh, this. I normally will not have the big ones. Um, I normally just take the smaller ones with me, the, the pink one and the red one and the black one, maybe the white one, the white one's pretty small. Uh, the brown and blue one I'll only take for special climbs that I know I'm gonna need them. Um, but the way these work, I'll show you on a bigger one just cause it's easier to see. You kind of have a hybrid piece of equipment. So this can be placed like a nut, just like that, passive into a crack, okay? And then if something pulls on it, uh, it's just gonna get snugger and snugger in there. Or it can be placed like a cam in this manner. Um, so instead of the nut placement like that, I would curve it up so the strap is going over the lobe. And this point would be on some kind of imperfection in the rock and get caught. 
and there would be a, a rock surface up here. So as the point got caught, you can see it would expand up, contact the rock surface up there, and pull tight. Okay, and the goal would be both of these lobes to be contacting the rock surface, if that makes sense. Um, that's a more kind of specialized piece of equipment um, for both uh, tricams and nuts. You will have to have alpine draws dedicated to those. So be mindful as you're climbing and extending cams that have their own carabiners uh, that you still have enough alpine draws to extend nuts and tricans which require it they won't you can't just run the rope through this loop okay and it's normally good for nuts and tricams to go ahead and extend not always again you gotta you know use your best judgment but to go ahead and extend because then especially if they're in the nut position um, as you climb up and the rope has friction on the alpine draw you can see it's not going to pull the tricam or the nut out of placement if it was closer um, that could potentially pull the nut or tricam up and that's how you get them out so it could pull it right out of the crack okay so that's something to, to think about um, if i am going to a climb that's you know all nuts or heavy on nuts i may have eight alpine draws or ten alpine draws instead of six uh, but you need to be you know thinking about that um that's it for my uh my uh, trad kit and I hope that you uh, found that uh, information useful uh, feel free to leave any questions in the comments uh, as you're thinking about buying stuff and its uses or its value uh, the, the equipment is expensive um, so um, you know more than happy to answer any questions you have uh, and then if you want to learn how to use your trad equipment and you live in the southeast uh, definitely check out uh, the website for the company I work for Atlanta Rock Climbing Company uh, we have a trad course where you can um, learn uh, how to use the different equipment in practice uh, hey give this uh, video a, a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content if you got some information out of it and definitely leave a comment with any questions love answering people's questions who want to get into trad climbing okay we'll catch you guys on the next one